everyone. So today I will be telling you about standing and progressive waves. So another lesson we spoke about when waves uh, move one against the another, they sometimes combine and they interfere. So standing waves or stationary waves come from that. Okay. So you can get a combination of two waves. They are moving in opposite directions, each having the same amplitude and frequency. Now, of course, that waves can interfere with any amplitude and frequency, but if the amplitude and frequency is the same, as a result, I will get a standing wave or a stationary wave, meaning that it looks like a wave that is not moving at all. So it always looks like this or this one or that one, depending on any of the number of, I don't want to say the keywords now, so I will just say the number of um, full way, uh, full amplitudes that you can see. Okay. So that's how I'm going to call it for now. There is an actual name for it. So it's just there standing or stationary. Okay. So that is where the name comes from. And again, while interference, um, it can come at any time and you can have the waves combining at any time, a standing wave or stationary wave is only made when the amplitude and the frequency are equal. Now, as I told you, this is a result of interference. And what happens is when the waves are superimposed, their energies are going to be either reinforced or cancelled out. Points where you see the maximum amplitude, they are points of reinforcement. Okay. And as I told you, they will get a name. Points where you have the minimum or zero, that's points of cancellation. So when the waves are out of phase, okay? Or when the waves would be out of phase if they would be superposing each other, okay? Now, just before I go on the next slides, um, since I'm putting this here, I'm going to explain you how you decide if, which harmonic you have. So this is a vibrating wave or string. And here they call it the first to the fifth harmonic. So number one, number two, number three, and so far. So the number of harmonics is going to be the number that you have of these higher amplitude points. Okay. I think I'll just say the name of the antinodes. So N1, first harmonic, one antinode. N2, second harmonic, two antinodes. N3, three antinodes. Highest point, highest point, highest point. N4, one, two, three, four. And N5, one, two, three, four, five. So the number of anti notes is going to tell you which harmonic you are in. Okay. Now, here we go. So I have here two progressing waves. I have the red and the blue one. And as you can see, they are interfering with each other. They are superimposing. And sometimes I have points where the waves cancel out. So at all times they are canceling out in these points in red. And I'll give you the names already. I'm going to call them nodes. And at all times they are reinforcing when do they get to these points. Okay. And these points are going to be the anti nodes. So this is an example of a standing wave that is created by two progressive waves. Okay. Now, when I have a stationary wave or standing wave, they are not going to transfer energy to the surroundings. And it's easy to see that. Imagine that each of these, imagine in terms of vectors, zeros are zeros, right? But here, imagine that I have a positive vector of number plus two. And then later on, I'm going to have a positive, uh, a negative minus two. So if I add them together, I get zero. So this is happening at all points of the waves. For each crest or reinforcement, I'm going to have the opposite uh, reinforcement in the opposite direction. So a super trough, for example. So this is why they do not transfer energy to the surroundings. So again, a standing wave looks like this black one. So it looks like it's not moving right or left. So it's just there. Okay. And is created when you have progressive waves um, moving in relation to each other and the amplitudes and the frequencies are the same. Okay. Now, a standing wave doesn't stay still forever, of course. It just has that it happens to have the same points where they, we have nodes and same points where you have anti nodes. Okay. So nodes and anti nodes. When I get a standing wave, as you could see from this animation, sometimes I have points that don't move at all, right? And the other ones, they grow up to the highest point or they sink into the lowest point, right? So the points where I have zero or cancellations or no displacement, they are called nodes. The points where the opposite happens, so where the wave grows up to getting to the maximum displacement, they will be called anti nodes. And this will be where you have the maximum amplitudes. Now, 
if I have, let's say, two waves of amplitude A, and they meet and they cancel sometimes and reinforce at other times, the points where they meet, of course, the amplitude is zero. The points where they reinforce is going to be 2A. So the amplitude or the place where I have the antinode will be 2A, two times the amplitudes. Now, as you can see from this picture and using stuff that you know from this topic already, each half of a wavelength, I have the same stuff, either each half of the wavelength I have a node, so this is half of a full wave, okay? Or each half of a wavelength I'll have an antinode, so one and then going again in here, this would be a full wavelength, so here's the other antinode, so this is half of a wavelength. So the distance between nodes and the distance between antinodes is half of a wavelength, which means because I go from antinodes to nodes and antinodes to nodes and so on, it means that the distance in between an antinode and a node will be the wavelength divided by four, so a fourth of the wavelength, okay? So let's write all of this down. The distance in between adjacent nodes will be one half of a wavelength. Adjacent is one node after the other, okay? So the closest nodes together. The distance between adjacent antinodes will be as well one half of a wavelength. And again, I put here the picture again, all right? The distance between an adjacent node and antinode will be a quarter of a wavelength, okay? And there it is, okay? So this is just for us to write down or for you guys to take notes. Now, remember that a full cycle is going to be a full wavelength, right? So the time between adjacent reinforcements, where I have antinodes, will be half of a cycle. And remember, half of a cycle because the distance is half of a wavelength, all right? Then the time between adjacent cancellations, so between adjacent antinodes, is going to be, again, if you remember that a full cycle is a wavelength, it's going to be half of a cycle because it's half of a wavelength in between. And the time in between adjacent reinforcements and cancellations is going to be one-fourth of a cycle because, again, a full cycle is a full wavelength, okay? And do remember, standing waves, they move sometimes up and then uh, there's going to be a time where it's all at zero and then always down, okay? So this is a picture of showing the same wave one quarter of a cycle after the first picture and one half of the uh, cycle after the first picture, okay? So I have, after one quarter of a cycle, I went from anti-node to node. That's the time in between reinforcements and cancellations. And then after one half of a cycle from the beginning, I have the, the time in between reinforcements. So if I had a reinforcement at the beginning, one half of a wavelength or one half of a cycle after, I have the other reinforcement, okay? I hope this is making sense. I mean, this is, you need to visualize this. That's why I have that animation, but I hope that I have something else in a second that is going to help you as well, okay? So, a table from AQA, stationary versus progressive waves. So, stationary waves, the frequency, um, I know that all particles except those at the nodes vibrate at the same frequency. In terms of amplitude, the amplitude varies from zero at the nodes to the maximum at the anti nodes. And in terms of phase difference between two particles, it's going to be equal to m, where m is any number from one to infinite, times pi, where m is the number of nodes, there it is, between the two particles, okay? And then in terms of progressive waves, in terms of frequency, all particles vibrate at the same frequency. All particles have the same, or the amplitude of the particles is all the same in terms of amplitude. And the phase difference is, as we know from a previous video, equal to 2 pi d over lambda, where d is the distance apart, this point, and lambda is the wavelength, okay? So, how do, can you see these stationary waves? Well, actually, I have two videos in here in case you cannot see this in a lesson because either we don't have equipment or just because you're watching this video and uh, you guys don't do it, um, this stuff in lessons. So I have here two videos which are pretty amazing. And if you play guitar, you may want to try it as well. So the first video, a guy is going to be playing just a song and you will be visualizing the vibrations on the singing strings because he's going to put his iPhone or his phone um, inside of the guitar and then you actually see the stationary waves as he plays the guitar, okay? And this is because of the progressive waves that are created for each string. 
And then the second one is actually how you do it. So imagine you have a guitar and you want to try it. Uh, the second video is for you, which I will add the links in the description, where it says, how do you see the guitar strings move on camera? And then it says groovy. So it's for you in case you want to do it, okay? I believe that's all. Yeah, it is all for today. Up to my next video. I hope it made sense. Up to my next video. Be happy and healthy. Bye.